Hello everybody, it's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten and I wanted to shoot a little video before I headed out from the gym um, because there's an important topic that's on my mind that I feel uh, warrants a discussion or a conversational piece. And today I just kind of pose a question to other believers, to other people that work in their purpose. Um, and my question is, do you feel that your purpose isolates you from the people that you hold the dearest, from the people that are closest to you? Do you feel that the purpose that God has given you is isolating you from the people that are the most important? And I want you guys to chime in on my uh, video. I'm going to upload this to Facebook and YouTube and just feel free to chime in and let me know that you guys have felt that way too um, because it's a little discouraging I know that our purpose goes so much beyond our peripheral and goes so much beyond the people that we know the people that we love our family members there are more people out there that God want us to reach so that may even mean you reach somebody in Africa or you reach somebody in Egypt or you reach somebody in Wherever you may be, it could be far away that we can actually reach people. Um, and so I know that not all the time we're going to be able to reach our family members. But my question you, to you, you guys are, does it bother you? Does it do something to you that, you know, you work hard at encouraging other people, other men, other women, and then the men and the women that are in your family or your friendship area, you, you feel like you just can't. Uh, make a difference in their lives if that makes any sense so just let me know what you guys feel this is a question I'm posing because I don't know everything and sometimes I have questions that I need help answering so it's good to ask people from that are from different environments or different perceptions uh, you may have grown up a little bit differently maybe you may have a, a perception that would work for me so that's why I, I'm asking this question. And please feel free to engage this video. If you watch it, um, I, I can see the views that I get like on my Facebook page. I can see all the views and even on my uh, YouTube, but I don't, I don't too much stress YouTube because I get a lot of good input uh, from Rick's channel when he shoots my videos from his channel, from my channel to his channel. So I get a lot of engagement but I want to be, I want, you know, some engagement from the people that follow me or the people that are in my peripheral to kind of engage me a little bit. So it would be great if you guys watch this video on Facebook or YouTube and you guys chime in, even if it's, if it's just a little topic, just, just one sentence. Or you could just say, hello, I'm here to let me know that all of what I'm doing is not in vain. So I would really, really, really appreciate that because I'm at a point in my life where I I don't want to claim it, but I feel like I'm experiencing burnout. So that's just where I am right now. Um, and just to share a little bit, um, I didn't ask for my journey. I didn't ask for my testimony. I didn't ask for none of that. That's something that was in a way kind of like forced upon me. Um, my purpose just came after that. So that was my purpose in life, was to help other people that been through like uh, experiences to overcome those experiences so that we can be the best, the best versions of ourselves. So that's, what, that's why I got out there and I got vulnerable. I opened myself up, I wrote a book. I tell about my traumas and, and all of the stuff that I've been through and I tell how I went through the, the phases of making not so good decisions and hurting myself and self-destructing and then God coming into my life and redeeming my life. And not only did he redeem my life and set me free and he pulled all of the junk out of me, he filled me with his spirit and his power. But along with his spirit and his power, it comes a responsibility. It's com it comes a responsibility of not keeping all of that to yourself so then you have to go out and share that with the world that's the whole point of restoring ghettos forgotten um, i am the authoress of ghettos forgotten daughters the book it is a testimonial about my lifestyle is meant to encourage uh people all over 
that may have grown up in situations that wasn't ideal, that was even traumatic, uh, to let them know that they can overcome any situation that they've been through. That's why I wrote the book. But I didn't want to write the book because I put a lot of personal stuff in there. But God wanted me to be transparent. When he wanted me to tell my story, he didn't want me to hold anything in and he wanted me to be transparent. I did that for God. I didn't do that for me. None of this is for me. None of it is for me. And I don't like to get emotional on my videos, but I think a lot of times people don't understand when God gives us a purpose, we really have no choice of the matter. If we really love him and we follow his word and we're connected to him and he asks us to do stuff, there's something he wants us to do, then we have to do it. But it's not like it's something I wanted to do, you know? I didn't per se ask for the life that I was brought up in. I didn't ask for any of it. I, I didn't ask. And I didn't want to write my book. When, when God first came to me, he wanted me to write my book. I'm going to give you all this and a lot of people, I know a lot of people don't believe me, but you have to believe in the power of God and how he communes with his people, with his children. So I remember... I had worked really, really hard and I had sacrificed and that's why I don't listen to people that say they can't afford stuff. We afford what we want to afford. I was a single mom. I was working hard. I was going to school and I was putting my money behind. Actually, I went and stayed in this apartment that didn't even have a front door. It had a slide door that had a lock on it. But I did that so I could save to purchase me a home because I wanted my children to have a safe, stable home. So I did that and I worked hard. I did that. I take credit for that. I give God credit for giving me the strength in my body to be able to do that. But I take credit for what I did also. Um, and so I did all that and I saved and I sacrificed and we went without some things and whatever we had to do to make sure I had enough money put aside and that I could pay my rent on time because it, the rent was affordable uh, so I could build my credit. So I did all that with the grace of God. I did that. But I'm saying all of that just to, to tell you guys what led me to me telling my story. After I had did some, um, I, I had been broken. And I had, God had been healing me and he had been purging me and he had been doing a lot of stuff in my life and in my spirit. So I was purging all these negative things and all these bad experiences out of me. But I was also working, um, you know, to, to bring forth something that I really wanted for my family. Again, the home wasn't for me. It was for my children. It was for my family. A lot of stuff that I do is not for me. I do it for others and I do it for God. So me opening up my life was really not for me. I don't want any credit. I mean, I don't want any, any. Uh, you know, some people do stuff, they do it for fame or they want to get rich or they want to be popular. I don't do any of that for that. I do it to glorify and magnify God. So that's why I do a lot of this stuff. But I had went through those processes and God blessed me with my home. Mind you, I am a person that grew up homeless half the time me and my family didn't have a home if you read my book it's in there so for me to go from being homeless big parts of my life to having my own home that was major for me and I thank God for that that he opened that door because little old me from the hood from the ghetto was able to work and get my own home that was sorry y'all this is the continuation that's why I should just turn off my alerts and everything I just got a call but I didn't want to miss finishing what I wanted to say. Um, so I did all that with the grace of God and I got my own home. But as soon as I moved into that home and I remember exactly, I didn't even have like my bed wasn't even set up. I was on my brand new carpet in my brand, my brand new built home. And I was laying down and God came to me in a dream and he told me he needed me to tell my testimony. He needed me to tell my story. And when he first came to me, 
and I can't explain it because a lot of people they don't even believe in the spiritual stuff but I can't explain it but I was like no I told him no like I didn't want to tell my story because I know it was like so off from the American dream or the white picket fences and all of this 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 bull crap that's out there the glamorous lifestyle all of that my story was so not bad it was so not glamorous I didn't want to tell that and so I and I told him no I said Lord I don't think so I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that I'm, I'm still embarrassed about some of the stuff that I went through as a child and and some of the decisions that I made in my adult life trying to figure this out I don't think I want to tell my story that was the first time he came to me the second time he came to me it was more it was more pronounced it was like I knew he wanted me to do this I knew it in my spirit he got a hold of me and he told me he needed me to tell my story and I told and I said okay Lord the second time he came to me I said okay I'll do it I didn't even know how I was gonna tell my story I didn't know if he wanted me to become a minister um, or he, I, don't, I didn't know how he wanted me to get it out there so then I said okay I, I guess I'll write a book and tell my story and so when I told him yes the work began my purpose began and it was no longer about me it was about me helping other people overcome and so that's why I open myself up and I make myself vulnerable and I tell my story and I encourage men I encourage women I encourage young children uh, young girls want young boys a lot of people don't know this about me but for over five years I mentored and I told my story in Harris County Juvenile Detention Center off of Katie Hockley Road I don't speak a lot about what I do because again it's not for me it's for the, the glorified God to help other people overcome but I had done that for five years no praise no pay the only thing I got from it was that I was edifying and I was magnifying God's love and his transforming power in my life. That's what I got paid back. And I tell you, there is no monetary value that can that can compensate for like the feeling that it gave me to be giving back to other young girls that have been hurt, that have been abused, that don't know where they fit in this life. Their lives don't look like the picket fence. It don't look like it. It is like, why? Why me? Oh, why can't I have a safe, loving home? And that's what I want to give back to. I want them to see, no, you don't have a choice of where you were raised or reared or what abuse you suffered or what trauma you experienced, but you have a right to change your now. That's why I do what I do. That's why I get on these videos. I'm such a behind the scene person. People can tell you that they really know me, but that's why I do what I do. It has nothing to do with anything else. I said all that so everybody would know that although I am the most loving and caring person, just like God gives us all free will, I give the people around me free will. And when I feel as though I am not making a difference in your life, you don't wanna hear what I have to say, you don't appreciate me, then I back off. And there's sort of like a little detachment that happens there. Although I love you, I'm praying from you, I'm praying for you from a distance. Because see, I need all my energy and my strength to work in my purpose. I can't be distracted by people that really, if they're not feeling it. They're not trying to change. Some people even like where they are. I let those people stay where they are and I pray for them from a distance. But I have to keep my energy so that I can keep encouraging other people that are where I used to be that they can overcome. That's what all of this is about for me. It's not about fame. I don't care if you don't like my post or engage my post. If that one person watches my video that, that was gonna give up that day, then that's all the payment I need. Just one person 
to get it, to know that God is not a respecter of persons and that he loves each and every one of us. It doesn't matter where we come from or what we've experienced or what we've done in our lives. He is a forgiving father and he wants you to know that you are loved and that you are special. And now I want to speak to the youth. I need y'all to listen to me. That love that you didn't get from your father doesn't mean you're not valuable. I spent half my life wanting that from my father. I never got it. I had to realize that my father in heaven always loved me. He always covered me. He always protected me. And he poured his love within me. That's the father that I depend upon. That's the father that I worship. That's the father that I live to make proud of me. Him. I'm speaking to the children that don't have fathers. The youth that don't have fathers or may not have mothers. It's not you. It's never been you. You're still valuable. They, it's something about that parent that they're dealing with their own demons. And it's not personal. Like if, if they detach themselves from their children or they walk away or whatever they're doing, they're dealing with their own demons. That does not have to be your identity. You don't have to attach yourself to somebody like that. Because I tell you what, if you wait forever for a father or a mother to come into your life and love you the way you always want to be loved, you'll never be happy because they may not ever do it. So you're spending your whole life not being able to, to uh, connect to people, not being able to have a long, healthy, long-term relationship, all because you don't feel like you're valuable or you're worthy of that because one of your parents sh uh, may have showed you that by them not being there. The devil is a liar. You are very worthy. You're very loved god loves you if all you have is god then you have enough that's what this message is about is for all the hurting youth out there and even adults because there's some adults they still ain't got over their father or their mother abandoning them they still have abandonment issues they can't connect i mean there's men out there right now today talking about uh, uh, high value women and how women nowadays are not most women are not high value they don't place value on the on the human life how dare you who made you God who made you God that you can sit up and tell somebody they're not valuable how dare you every person walking the face of this earth even the, the bum on the street corner is valuable all they need to be is reminded of that within that's some that's some inner work i talk about inner work all the time because it's most it's really really important i don't care what your parents do for you i don't care what another romantic interest do for you i don't care what a friend do for you nobody can do your inner work you have to do that if you still got pain from a, pa a parent not being there then the, you need to take some counseling because there's some layers to that aban those abandonment issues that will keep you from not being in a healthy long-term relationship. And I'm not just talking about romantic. I'm talking about platonic as well. I'm not going to stay on here too much longer because this is a continuation of the first one. But I, I felt... I, I felt like I needed to put this out there because I think a lot of people think I do this for my health. <laughs> I take time out of my busy day and I make these videos to encourage other people. This is this is for God. This is not for me at all. Remember, I told you guys I didn't even want to tell my story. And so, please understand that I'm allowing God to use me as his vessel. To go out and put in the work and do the work without no payment at all other than the satisfaction to know that I am carrying out my purpose in this life. So that's all I'm doing. I, I want to encourage other people that are hurting because I've been that person that was hurting. And I want to encourage you guys to overcome. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's why I talk about a lot of inner work. It doesn't matter what education you 
you possess, you go out and you work and you get, now that's great. I'm not telling people not to go out and get a college degree. It's great to educate yourself. We need that. We need more of it actually. But it doesn't matter how much education you get, how much money you save, what what kind of big home you have, what two or $300,000 car you drive. If you still feel empty on the inside, that stuff will never be enough. And you'll spend your whole life chasing, chasing things to fill that emptiness that only God can fill it through healing you and purging you of all the doubts, all the fear, all the lies. And you have to detach yourself from that parent that walked away. That's key. Because if you hold your identity in a parent that's never been there, you'll never know where you're headed. You'll never be, know where you're going, and it'll never be any good for you. Your life could be, you could be on cloud nine, and then it's going to be that emptiness inside. And you're going to be like, what's wrong with me? Like for men, I, I, I got this beautiful, I got this beautiful eye candy of a wife. She's beautiful. She's immaculate. She, she, she talk when I tell her to talk. I, I'm joking now. But she do what I, I want her to do and all of these things. And I got, the, I got, I, I'm a millionaire now. So I got money and, and I drive this car and I got this house. But when you're alone, that feeling is still there. That emptiness. Why ain't I happy? Why don't I feel complete? Because you ain't dealt with that inner man. And for women, you ain't dealt with that inner woman. All of those accolades, all of those people, all that sex and drugs, none of that's gonna fill that emptiness that you gotta deal with. And we have to confront it. And we gotta let the ego go. A lot of people tell everybody, they tell us that we, we, um, we're we weak if we need um, mental health or anything. That No, that makes you strong. It makes you strong because you're finally taking you're finally taking responsibility for your mental health because you realize your mental health, if it's healthy, you're gonna soar higher than you've ever done before because now you can receive God's goodness and his blessings, all God's good things. He wanna give it to you, but some of y'all, some of us ain't even in a position to receive because as soon as somebody come into your life to give you something of value, you question it. You question it because you don't trust them. You don't trust them because you have trust issues. And, and, and come on, hear me now. Your trust issues, they don't come from that, that, that partner that walked away from you. They come from your father not being there. They come from your mother not being there. They come from things that happened to you in your past that your parents didn't protect you from. So the people that were supposed to cover you and protect you wasn't there. And so that's where you develop trust issues because if I can't trust the people that were supposed to, to guard me and secure me and make me feel safe, how can I trust a stranger? How can I trust a stranger? I know because I've been there. And so then you got good people walking into your life. You can't even receive them because you got trust issues. You got issues you need to deal with from within. And I wasn't trying to go this deep, but it gets so much more deeper than where I'm at now. We got to deal with that stuff, y'all. We can't just say, uh, I'm not perfect. No, you're not perfect, but you may be missing God's best because you don't want to deal with that, that deep, dark secret that you have implanted in you. Cover scars cannot heal. They just stay and they get bigger and bigger and uglier and uglier until one day it's going to come out and, and, and it's going to make you deal with it. Trust me, I know. You can only tuck it in for so long before it's going to explode and you're going to have to deal with that. Why not deal with it now before it does that? Why not deal with it now and say, Lord, I need help. Guide me on where to get my help. I need to work this stuff out of me, Father God. You pray to God, ask him for help. I guarantee you, he's going to bring resources to you. I don't care if you ain't got a dime in your pocket. It might be a spiritual leader. There's somebody that can help you along the way. It might be a, a therapy person that's willing to give you discounts on your, your therapy sessions or talk to you uh, without charging you to help you work through all your traumas and your hurts and your pains so that you can grow up and be the best, the best versions of yourselves. I'm talking to the youth because I want you to know this world is lying to you. 
you're special just as you are because God made you and he didn't make no mistakes on nobody. So don't let this, this world lie to you that you're not enough. You are enough. You're special. You're beautiful. And you got gifts inside of you. All you got to do is ask God to help you cultivate those gifts. He's, God put a gift in each and every, he put gifts and abilities in each and every one of us. We just got to ask him to help us cultivate them in a way that glorifies, of course, and magnifies him, not our flesh. Because see, a lot of people, they got gifts, but they using their gifts for the wrong purposes. They using it to glorify themselves when we need to use our gifts and our abilities to glorify God and show God's power in our lives. I'm done. I'm at the gym. People probably think I'm crazy because they think I'm talking to myself, but I just wanted to put this out there to let a lot of people know because I think I'm misunderstood. I think a lot of people and maybe even people in my family think I do this because I want the attention. Trust me, I'm such a behind the scene person. I don't want none of that attention. I don't want that fake love. I don't want none of that. If you're genuine, bring it on. But I don't need to be validated. God validates me every day I wake up. I don't need validation. I don't need all of that gook that comes from the world. I need more of God. His blessings, his anointing. And when I say blessings, it's not just the financial blessings. It's the spiritual blessings and coverings and protection. And all of those things that have no monetary value on it. That's what I need from him. That's why I do his work. Earlier, something happened to me, and then I'm going to be done. The enemy got a way of planting seeds in the people that are weak. And somebody said something to me that hurt me. And then it made me think back upon uh, some people that, that are close to me that I really love and I adore. And you would think by uh, the work that I do and, and how I show them I love them and how I support them, that would be enough. But sometimes it's not enough. But the enemy started to attack me earlier with you doing all of this incur all these encouragement videos. They don't want to hear you. They don't even like you. I mean, why are you doing this? You could live good if you didn't have all this purpose on you. You could do you. You could be happy. You don't need all this trouble and this. you're trying to pull stuff out of people that don't even believe in themselves. Who do you think you are? And then I had to stand up and say, I am a daughter of God. That's who I am. He assigned me this position. That's why I'm doing it. And I'm going to do it until the day that I die. Whether my family or my closest people accept it, that's okay. I'm still doing what God wants me to do. And you know, I've had people come to me. Young girls come to me, even boys that was in the juvenile system and say, I, wrote, I read your book because my book is in their library. And they told me, how I help them through. That's enough for me. If one person come to me and say, I read your book, it really helped me get beyond. I had a cousin, I have cousins that read my book and they told me they appreciated it and that it really helped them through some difficult parts of their lives so they can understand why they kept making the same decisions over and over and over and over again. They had to get, I mean, sometimes we need other people to put, our, put their perception in. And then you say, oh, that's what it was. That's why I did what I did. And that's what I do what I do. It's not to magnify or glorify me. It's to magnify and glorify God in heaven. The one that saved me. And I appreciate that. My grandmother was a praying grandmother. When I was on the streets, she prayed, she covered and protected me. I was near death one time and the Holy Spirit protected me. That's how I know God is real. There's other reasons how I know God is real, but that's one of the things that always reminds me that God has always been there for me, no matter how hard it got. And everything that I do when I get on these videos is not vainly, per vainly done. It's done to, to edify God, to, to bring glory to God. And it's, it's done to encourage people, to help people understand that you can overcome. Even if your life don't look like the American dream, God can take your life and change it and, and, and it'll knock your socks off. You'll be like, oh my God, I didn't know I, would, I could ever accomplish this goal. But you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I want to encourage y'all this morning, if any of you are hurting right now today, I ask you to stop what you're doing right now today 
and you profess to God that you give over all of the hurt, all the pain, all the trauma to him and ask him to come into your life and help you to get the help that you need if you need any counseling or whatever to open those doors because there's times where I've been in situations where I didn't know which way to move and I'm like Lord I, I don't know what to do give me a thought give me a word give me a sign give me a page to read send an angel to put a word in my ear or something that will help put me in the right direction and he always did it my Heavenly Father has never let me down. He's always done that for me. And so I challenge anybody out there that don't know which way to go, get on your knees and open your heart and your soul and ask God to come inside and do some cleaning up. Ask him to clean you. We all need it. I don't care how good we think we are. We all need to be cleaned up. Every once in a while, Lord, I'm dirty. Clean me up, Father. I don't like my thoughts, Lord God, clean me up. I don't like what I'm feeling, Lord God, clean me up. We all need him. I don't care how high you are, and I'm even talking to people, because I know other people watch my channel. I know other people watch my videos. They got all they, they stuff together. But I don't care how much stuff you think you got together. If that inner man ain't right, it's hindering you. It's blocking you from receiving God's best. So I challenge you today to work on that I'm done. I wanted to shoot this video. It's 128. I'm already behind. Um, but I wanted to say I love you guys. And everything that I do, I do it because I do it for God. None of this is for me. This is this is my purpose. This is my calling. This is my journey that God put me on. And I'm going to do it until I leave here. Uh, I want to encourage you guys. I love you. I want you to know that you're enough. Stop letting the world tell you you're not enough because you're enough just as you are. I love you. Take care. Always remember to put God first. Bye-bye.